And now we have Leigh from Shopify. Hi. Um, my name is Leigh, and I'm a production engineer at Shopify, specifically on the developer acceleration team. So my team's job is to make developing at Shopify the best experience possible. And we do this mainly by writing really cool tools. And I'm going to be talking about one of those today. And if you couldn't guess by the title, it's about our deploy tool. Tool. So our deploy tool is called ShipIt, and it's open source, so you can find it at this link here. When I joined Shopify over a year ago, this is kind of what our um, pipeline looked like. Um, a developer would merge their code into master, which would kick off a container build and a CI run, which is both orchestrated by ShipIt. And then ShipIt would then complete those two tasks, and a deploy button would appear in the ShipIt UI, and the developer would again click to deploy their code. And this process would take about four to five minutes to ship all this new code into production. And so this process at the very end took about four to five minutes. And we, with the setup, we were able to deploy around 30 to 40 times per day on average. Um, but our team, wanting to automate everything, we set our sights on uh, automating the click to deploy step. Um, but we might ask, like, we're already shipping a lot. Why even bother auto-deploying? Well, we had two main reasons for this, the first being um, deploy logjam. This happened when, at peak hours, such as right after lunch, we'd get like a huge amount of commits being um, deploy or merged at the same time. And this was a problem in the cases where something went wrong in production. It was way harder to find, to pinpoint which commit was really causing the issue. So with auto-deploy, we would be able to um, uh, limit the amount of commits uh, that came in every deploy. The other main reason was unship changes. So either because like someone forgot to ship their changes or um, because they assumed someone else would click the deploy button, um, we would have issues where um, the developer who ship their code, or who'd merged the code was no longer there when the change was actually deployed, and you know they're not there to take responsibility for it. So with that in mind, we updated our pipeline. You still have the developer merge their uh, code into master, uh, kick off a container build, and a CRI run, and then ship it now takes care of deploying the code when it's ready. And this happens at a configurable batch size at a configurable rate. And again, it all goes into production. So this is really fun and um, had a few impacts on our culture. The first being um, high expectations on our team, because developers are expected to stay around, so our system has to be fast and reliable. The second is trust. So we put a lot of trust in our developers to ship production-ready code. And finally, um, fearlessness. So this comes back to the issue of unshipped changes. Maybe some of those developers were scared to be the one to click deploy that deploys the batch of code. But here, you are owning your code when you hit the merge button. So you might be wondering if um, hitting merge is the final step in, in, in uh, interacting with our deploy system. How do people know when their changes have been shipped? That's where another one of our tools comes in handy, our chat ops bot called Spy. So Spy, when you merge your code, Spy will send you a message that says, hey, uh, you merged your commit. It's going to be scheduled to deploy in the few, next few minutes. When the CI run and the container build are complete, you'll get another message that says, hey, like the deploy is starting, um, just so you know. And finally, when the deploy is complete, you'll get one final message and a gentle reminder to say, hey, go verify your changes. Um, and as you can see by timestamps, this one took around five minutes. Uh, so, so far, I've just been talking about cases where everything is fine and dandy, but what if something goes wrong? Um, well, in the interest of keeping it as easy as possible, we have five steps. The first is to lock deploys. Uh, this prevents any new changes from kind of piling up and um, we, like that we don't want to interfere with the rollback process, because that's the next step. 
is rolling back your commits. And this is just one red button in the ship it UI. Um, rolling back should have gotten us back into a good state. So the third step is to verify this. Um, then we can revert our commit um, so that our, our master branch is clean again. And then unlock deploy so we can start shipping again. Uh, one issue with this previous setup is that when deploys are locked, that's really great for the engineers who are uh, trying to solve an issue, but it really sucks for everyone else who's just trying to commit their code. Because when the deploys are locked, you can't really add your commits into a master yet. So that's where we innovated again, and we added a merge queue. So a merge queue allows us to, instead of clicking to merge your commit into master, you can enqueue your merge. And um, when the pipeline is ready, ship it will merge your queue and our merge your commit into master. And don't worry, like we have a timeout. So if your commit is in the merge pipeline or the merge queue for more than 20 minutes, before it is merged into master, you get another uh, message from Spy to asking you to confirm that you're still around. So. This is a pretty awesome system that we've built already, but we're always looking for more to improve. The first thing being speed. Um, the dream would be like one change for deploy, but um, <laughs> we're not quite there yet. So we've started instrumenting our pipeline to see where we can improve. Uh, the second thing is testability. So we have around four nines of testability, but when you have you know thousands of tests, a few flaky tests can still cause a lot of lost human and compute time. Um, the third thing would be auto rollback. So um, that's kind of the next logical step after auto deploy. But we'll have to kind of look into which metrics are best for us to look at in terms of auto rollback. Another wish list item is canaries. So being able to roll out on a, a small set of machines, that would really help with upgrades. And um, finally, we're also working on another open source project to help us deploy with ShipIt to Kubernetes. And you can check it out there. Um, thank you for listening. And if you have any other questions, we're out in a booth in the corner. Mm -hmm.